so in December of 2014, I moved to a farm um, on the north shore of Nova Scotia called Abundant Acres, and I was working for two farmers there um, as a kind of winter apprenticeship. I was apprenticing as a, as a market gardener or as a farmer um, in Nova Scotia. And that winter happened to be possibly the worst winter people have seen in about seven years at that point, um, where the snow started in December and kind of didn't really stop until May. Um, and we had a succession of really heavy snowstorms. Um, and that was really my introduction to uh, climatic variation and how climate change might be affecting the possibilities for agriculture. Um, Precipitation has been going kind of wild in the Maritimes for the past couple of years. And this was something that I was hearing about when I was an apprentice, but uh, it wasn't really made clear to me until we were literally digging in like four feet of snow before we could get to our hoop houses, which are, I guess in England, you call them polytunnels. And then like lifting the plastic and being in this magical world where snow was up to our sides by about five feet. Um, I had been in my bachelor's degree doing research on climate change. I knew that it was affecting Atlantic Canada, but suddenly I, have, I had this whole other context to apply it to where a community that I really loved and also that was vitally important to food security in the region was being negatively affected by it. If you've got snow on your field until May, not only won't you be able to get to the field till May, but then you have to wait for it to dry out. So the whole season gets pushed. Um, and so when I came to the ECI, that, I think, was the starting point. I wanted to respond to what I'd seen and to the concerns that people had that I'd been hearing and figure out what was going on with climate change in the Maritimes and how it was going to affect the food system. My research focused on uh, the effects of climate change on small-scale agriculture in the Maritime provinces, because that was what I was most, I guess, of, of an expert in. I had ties in with the community, and so I could immediately go in. and. Basically what it involved was uh, I rented a pickup truck off some friends. Uh, I put a tent and a sleeping bag into the back and I just drove around the Maritimes for the whole summer, basically hopping from farm to farm, visiting farmers and doing interviews along the lines of what were they perceiving in terms of changes in weather or of temperature or general patterns. And also where were they perceiving um, different points of vulnerability that weren't necessarily linked to the, the climate per se, but that might be made worse by that. Once we had all of those interviews written down word for word, we went through and were coding different uh, bits of, of the interviews for talking about precipitation change or talking about how they were perceiving uh, the government's intentions towards farmers or, or other relationships. And then that became on the one hand, my master's thesis, uh, but was also kind of refined and distilled into two working papers, which were published by the ECI earlier this year. The government of Canada this year is setting up a food policy, a national food policy, and it's the first time that this is happening. And part of that is supposed to be talking about climate change adaptation. And those kinds of discussions have been going on in all of the maritime provinces for the past 20 years, but farmers haven't been consulted on it. And one of the main things that came out of the research that I did is that farmers are experts in their own right and have really useful observations and insights to contribute to that kind of policy making. The kinds of observations on trends and different kinds of climatic variations that were being seen were being seen in the same way across the whole Maritimes, which is basically like Belgium and the Netherlands put together in terms of area. So, to have that kind of significance be that closely linked with the best scientific projections that we can make shows that they're really useful actors and that they should be treated with respect of their knowledge. The other obvious reason is that they're gonna be affected by any kind of food policies or adaptation policies that come together. And oftentimes in the past, some have seen themselves as being the victims of those because they weren't adequately consulted. So bringing farmers to the fore in discussing climate change in agriculture or climate change in the food system is going to be really necessary to building policies that are not only effective, but that are also just.